Hello there. How many times have you heard me use phrases like effortless, easy eyeshadow and wash of color on my channel? The lovely Karima McKimmy, a fellow Aussie YouTuber I've admired for years, filmed a one and done eyeshadow video late last year that perfectly captures all of those things. And she kindly tagged me to share some of my favorites. So I've been meaning to film this ever since. I also had a great chat with Karima recently as part of my new conversation series called The Beauty of It. I'm so excited to be partnering with Stereo, a new live interactive audio app so I'll tell you more about my show, the app, upcoming guests, and you'll hear clips from my chat with Karima later on. If you're into easy eye looks that look like you put some effort in but took you about 10 seconds total, you're in the right place. Many of my favorite one and done shadows are actually cream blushes or bronzers that I just use on my cheeks, then my eyes. You can see some multitasking blush sticks in an old video and I'm planning an update as part of my new Cream Blush Chronicles series. For now, I thought it was only fair to talk about actual eyeshadows, otherwise we'd be here all day. I tried to include different formulas and brands in this edit and came up with four categories, eyeshadow sticks or crayons, creams, liquids, and powders. I also limited this to single shadows, even though I often look at eyeshadow palettes as combinations of great one and done shadow possibilities. Just because there are more options in a palette doesn't mean the look you create has to be more complicated. You can definitely use colors one at a time too. The beauty of almost all of these shadows is that they're easy to draw or swipe on, then quickly smudge with your fingertips. I prefer to work most of them in that way, not only because creams often blend best with the warmth of your fingers, but it also creates a laid back, smudgy, relaxed, look. I sometimes do the same with powders, but prefer to soften them with a blending brush. Refa 01 is a great classic shape, as is the good old MAC 217, or a slightly fluffier style like the Zoeva 228 or Morphe M441. Will quite a lot of these products crease? Yep, that's normal for creamy formulas. Do I mind? No, definitely used to my eyeshadows moving around a bit. I have slightly oily eyelids, so I'm not expecting anything to last all day. But if I do want to help things stay in place, a bit of the NARS Pro Prime smudge proof eyeshadow base works well for me. Let's get into the groups. Starting with sticks. The NYX Jumbo Eye Pencils are an old but enduring drugstore favorite. I discovered these through Violette FR. She's used several shades on her channel, but Rust is one I always enjoy and have a backup of because they can be hard to find. A brilliant, deep, metallic burgundy. Super pigmented, but creamy enough to sheer it out too. One of the very first shadows I ever bought was one of these Sephora shadow and liner crayons. They're fantastic. They come in different finishes and I've used lots of different colors over the years, but a more recent discovery a couple of years ago from the matte range was the shade 47 Terracotta. The colors sometimes come and go, but luckily this pigmented matte is still around. Laura Mercier caviar sticks often pop up in these sort of videos. They're a bestseller in the eyeshadow stick slash crayon category. I use a few different shades, but one you might remember from my 2020 makeup favorites was the Bold Copper Desert Sand. These are so long wearing. This one is a lot of fun as a graphic liner or smudged out for a wash of shimmery orange. Here's the first of quite a few formulas in common with Karima. The By Terry Ombra Black Stars are one of the brand's best known products. Shimmery, soft, pigmented, long lasting color once you smudge it in. You can see more shades swatched in my previous videos, but I love the trio they launched last summer. Sunny Flash is a warm golden bronze for a lazy look with a bit of sparkle. Next, some creamy little pot picks. If I was redoing my holy grail makeup video, you know this one would make the cut. Tom Ford's Cream and Powder Eye Color in Golden Peach has made many appearances on my channel since 2018. I still love it and it still has so much left. This is such a stunning, luminous shade. It doesn't have any glitter. There is a gold glitter topper inside the lid if you fancy it, but on its own, this soft peach just makes your eyes look alive. Charlotte Tilbury's Eyes to Mesmerize Pots popped up in Karima's video and Amanda Zed's One and Done Shadow List. Rose Gold is my favorite shade from the range. I'm sure you're picking up on a peachy, pinky theme here if you're new to my channel, but they're the tones I love most and they work really well with my green eyes. This cream is so soft, so I pick up the tiniest dot on my finger, smudge it on and blend with a fluffy brush. Another 2020 favorite here, the Trini London Eye to Eye Pots. Nice and creamy in a wide range of shades and finishes, Fortune is an easy everyday shade for me that just brightens up the eyes. I mentioned in that favorites video that it's described as a molten copper and I've seen it look warm and even peachy on some people, but because of my really cool undertones, it's more of a champagne on me. This final cream is a real no shadow shadow pick. I love Gillian Dempsey's lid tints for that cool, editorial, creasy, creamy, barely there hint of color, and Glimmer is one of my go-tos. Again, quite peachy, but if you sheer it out, the peach isn't as obvious and you're just left with a wet looking lid. Lovely with a fresh face, a bunch of black mascara, and a red lip. 
If you're halfway through this video but you already want more one and done shadow content or you'd just like to hear two Australians who are sometimes told we sound alike talking to each other, you can have a listen to my interview with Karima McKimmy over on Stereo. I'm really excited to have partnered with this new live broadcast social platform. I love a good chat, I love listening to conversations and I've always loved the idea of hosting a podcast but this is instant and interactive. You can listen to and participate in conversations on Stereo in real time by sending audio messages messages for the hosts to respond to. I'm hosting a new conversation series there called The Beauty of It. We all have a different journey with makeup and skincare and that's the beauty of it. So I'll be diving into different guests' relationship with beauty. Karima was one of my first guests and I had so much fun chatting to her. Have a listen. What are the products where they're definitely rich or old to use but you would never get rid of them? I have a, ho a whole little vault uh, of like really nostalgic makeup that obviously is like so far past its use by date you wouldn't be able to <laughs> touch it oh you know what i've got the chanel, for us yeah the you know chanel illusion d'ombres the ysl the first release of the glossy lip stains yeah. what i would give to have a little rummage around in uh, i've got box. to send you i've got to send you some photos of these it's yeah so this is, good. we'll have to have some photos afterwards jump in let's see who's here hey karima and matilda my question for you is what is your favorite part of your beauty routine love you guys Thank you so much, Audrey. Oh, good question. It's a good question. If you want to catch up on the rest of our chat or my first show with What Kate Finds, you can listen in full on my profile if you click the link in the description box to download Stereo for free. It's an 18 plus app. You can create your own profile and avatar and follow me at Matilda on Video. My next live show is coming up this week and I'll be chatting to one of my favorite makeup artists, Harry Makes It Up. You can sign up to be notified when we go live and send us a voice message during the show. Hope you can tune in. Now let's meet the liquids. The L'Oreal eye paints were a great old drugstore find. I don't know if they're around anymore and in the US I know they were sold as double-ended shadows but let me know if you get lucky and find one. 102 Irresistible Rose is a perfect petal pink. She is out beautifully for just a suggestion of rose. I still own a few Giorgio Armani eye tints in their original longer tube but they were repackaged into pint-sized form a couple of years ago. These popped up in Sandra's one and done shadow video, another one I'll link below. I love some of the shimmery shades she spoke about but 23 Camel Smoke is a colour I found through the Anna Edit, a great barely there brown for a bit of definition when you can't really be bothered. I swatched all of the Kosas 10 second eyeshadows back in 2019 and people were blown away by just how pigmented this formula is given it's so watery. So watery that it will spill so make sure the lid is on tightly when you shake it up. Copper Halo is a great name for this one, warm and coppery and golden with a bit of shimmer and a more orange look sheared out. Another Karima match. The Huda Beauty Matte and Metal Melted Shadows come in such a fun range of brights and pastels. Room Service is a toasty terracotta brown I enjoy. Surprise, surprise. Even though liquid formulas can seem trickier to work with because they're more fluid and set quickly, they also tend to last the longest. I'll give you a treat and swatch Do Not Disturb from the other end too. This is a gorgeous rose gold liner or you could swipe it all over. Rounding things out with powders. If you watched my 2020 favourites, you know the Burberry eye colour in rose pink had to be in here, even though this colour doesn't seem to be around anymore. I have a real thing for pink shadows but haven't found any quite like this one. It's a strong rose pink. Perfect in one of my most loved colour combinations, a wash of pink on the eye and a bold red lip. Very early viewers from way back in 2017 might remember this Shantakai Shine eyeshade in Carnelian. It instantly came to mind when I was brainstorming for this video. A stunning peachy orange shimmer that feels quite creamy for a powder and catches the light in a lovely way. Definitely could have renamed the video Coppery Orangey Terracotta Pinky Shadows at this point. My second to last McKimmy match are the Colourpop Super Shock Shadows. The texture is like a cross between a cream and a powder so they're easy to smudge on. Shop is a bright coral I love having fun with. Unfortunately not around anymore and unfortunately mine has dried out a bit but Wattles is still available. Someone recently suggested this as a possible dupe for Burberry Rose Pink but I already owned this so I know it's very pretty but not as strong and it has a more luminous finish. Finishing with a formula Karima and I both selected, Pat McGrath Labs Eye Dolls Single Shadows. She knows how to make intense buttery powders. Some of you might be lucky enough to own one of Pat's palettes but I use a few singles. Pale Fire is an iridescent duochrome pop of pink. 
Let me know if you'd like to see more metallic, fun, but wearable one and done shadows because I could definitely film a part two. Over to you. Please share your favorite one and done shadows in the comments and your favorite one and done shadow tag videos you've enjoyed. I'd love to hear which formulas you prefer and what sort of shades you're drawn to. Do you enjoy an easy effortless eye or do you like to take your time? A big thank you to Karima for tagging me and for chatting with me on stereo. Please let me know if you have a listen. I have so many guests on my dream list to interview so make sure you follow me on the app to keep an eye on upcoming shows and I'll also share them on my Instagram at Matilda on Video. Thanks for watching. See you next time.